Sheen shot. Yeah, boy. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're going over the top five bows in Outward Definitive Edition. These are the best of the best for ranged combat. Defeat enemies before they get near you and have loads of damage in every single arrow. Outward has some pretty fantastic bows with cool looks and amazing abilities. One that will not be on this list but should be at least recognized is the Czar Bow. It can only be grabbed as a reward from the Sword of War Academy faction quest. This guy is very useful because it has infinite durability and will never break. Bow durability can be eaten through pretty quickly due to pulling back so many arrows. However, it does not deal the most physical damage for bows and really has nothing else going for it other than maybe its looks and high impact. So while it is definitely a good option, it's not one of the top 5. So let's get into this and find out which 5 outward bows are the best. At number 5 we have the Vampiric Bow. It had to be on this list just for its looks alone. I mean come on, it's both creepy and disturbing while also looking kind of cool? Really weird combination of things here and it actually has a heart shaped tendon on it which fits the whole blood thing I guess. Vampiric weapons can really suck to get. You need to enchant an iron weapon and then kill loads of enemies with it to absorb their life force. When you're done, you do it three more times and turn it into a vampiric weapon at a blood altar. Quite a bit of work and honestly why they aren't the best option for every build. However, the bow is pretty nice to have. You get healed by a small portion of your health every time you hit an enemy with an arrow. Which means in extended fights you could easily regen without taking a potion. And it has a large amount of physical damage as well which means with the proper armor, mainly Master Kazite armor, you'll leech a lot of health. But it also has several issues. One being it's a grind to get, but another being you shouldn't really be getting hit in the first place. That sounds stupid, I know, but really, if you're going to play long range, you want to spend most of the time running from enemy attack range. So, I think it's better to deal more damage and kill faster, rather than having a little bit of health regen. The health leech is definitely cool though, and in a full playthrough, you would be happy to heal so easily. But I think there are some better options, and this thing is quite disturbing in the first place. At number 4 we have the Horror Bow. This can be crafted from the Chitin of Shell Horrors. Looking like a prickly beast, it has a fun aesthetic. Unfortunately, it sucks. Like, really sucks. You only poison enemies instead of inflicting extreme poison and its damage is just okay. You might be thinking, well, why is it on this list then? Don't forget about enchanting. Weirdly enough, this bow can be enchanted with irrepressible anger to inflict extreme poison and gain 10 decay damage. With these stats added onto the horror bow, it becomes a monster, shredding through enemies rapidly and letting you deal damage over time. Fighting certain enemies in Caldera can be tough, but the ones weak to decay like Tor Crabs and Caligrays can be killed very quickly with just a few arrows from the horror bow. It's weird when you first get it, because it really does feel kind of bad. But then, the enchant massively boosts its power. In fact, you can kill the Lightmender, a pretty formidable boss for many, in under 30 seconds due to this guy's decay damage. Arrows already deal a large chunk of enemy health, so adding any elemental damage at all feels almost unfair. The Horror Bow is one you absolutely need if you're building around a bow. Enemies weak to decay stand no chance, and it feels fun to be this much stronger than your opponents. At number 3 we have the Astral Bow. This one is a must have and is actually ridiculous. It's perfect for a Mage Ranger hybrid and honestly makes for a super easy playthrough if you set it up correctly. The Astro Bow deals moderate physical damage and impact, but inflicts Scorched and Curse in 4 to 5 hits. This makes enemies weak to fire and decay damage. You can then activate these hexes using the Torment skill from Hex Mage to burn and poison your opponent. They will not only take a lot of damage initially, but the overtime damage from both ailments will decimate everything. It's a very fun way to play outward and turns you into an elemental god. Luckily, this bow also does more. 
you gain plus 10% damage bonus to every element. It's the best Astro weapon that not only allows you to deal elemental damage with regular arrows, but also buffs that damage. All you need is 5 arrows per enemy at the most, and then Torment. Run around until enemies die to flames and poison. It's incredibly powerful, and you could wear armor that increases these damage types even further, which makes you a master of damage over time. I highly recommend this one, even though I still think it has two downsides. Number one being that you have to use this with at least the basic hex magic. This is true for all Astro weapons, but there really isn't any wiggle room to get unique with it. Just max out decay and fire damage and spam arrows and hexes. I still think it's amazing and fun, but it's worth noting. Then you have the crafting process. Finding a waning tentacle is not that bad as it drops from a D's, but two short handles are impossible to get if you're unlucky. They only drop from ornate chests and caldera or from scarlet emissaries that pretty much everyone avoids. And since there are so many different astral weapons and ingredients for them, it could take a while to make the bow. So save those short handles. The astral bow is kind of grindy to get, but absolutely worth it. At number two, we have Murmur. This bow is the best option for any physical damage bow build as it deals more than the SAR one. Less impact by far, but more damage. Murmur is special for several reasons, but the main thing being it reduces your stamina cost by 15%. Bow builds need only two things to work, high damage and loads of stamina. If you decide to use this bow, it already has both built right into it. Now, this is a Caldera weapon, so it also reduces your physical resistance by 15%. This isn't great, but again, you're playing with a bow. You want to stay at long range and kill things before they reach you. If you get hit by anything, it will often be an elemental projectile rather than melee attacks. The Murmur feels perfect for maxing out the physical damage potential of every bow shot. It's also pretty and large, which looks great while running around. But even with how good this elegant weapon is, it isn't number one for bows and outward. And here's why. Obviously, it has a negative stat, which doesn't matter much, but it's there. Then there's the crafting it. You need the ceremonial bow and a pearlbird mask. The ceremonial bow is easy to get, but pearlbird masks can be more elusive. And once you finally get one, you need to use it in order to gain Murmur, meaning you don't even get to wear it. So while Murmur is excellent, it's gonna take you longer to make without legacy shenanigans. The number one and best bow in Outward is the Meteoric Bow. This guy looks really cool, but also deals an insane amount of damage for a bow. I think it deals the most damage, especially if enchanted to also inflict burning. It inflicts around 24 physical and fire damage. Finding a bow that deals elemental is hard on its own, but finding one with 24 is absolutely nuts. The Meteoric Bow kills enemies very quickly because most of the more challenging enemies have resistance to physical damage. You obviously should use something else for fire enemies, but every other enemy type gets wrecked by fire. It's seriously strong, and even in Caldera where enemies are stronger, the mobs still can't handle the heat. And that's not all. The Meteoric Bow inflicts Holy Blaze, which deals loads of lightning damage every second. This completely demolishes those enemies who are resistant to fire, and it's very powerful for bosses. Now, to inflict this, the enemy must first be burning. This sucks, because the Meteoric Bow does not burn enemies. However, enchant it with Enkindle, and it will. This enchant also gives it 5 extra fire damage, only increasing its already over-the-top damage. The bow will then burn enemies, and then turn that burning into Holy Blaze. This is most effective against tougher enemies or bosses as at least half the game will die by the time you inflict burning. The only real downside to the Meteoric Bow is that it's not optimal for fighting fire enemies. And even then you still have that Holy Blaze which can work against everything as long as they're not immune, like golems. The Meteoric Bow is my personal favorite bow. It has nice elemental damage that can easily be buffed and looks fantastic. This is the bow you need and it pairs very well with the antique plate armor I absolutely love. 
Enchant the set with economy, and you have a very powerful bow build that clears outward easily. It's really, really crazy how fast you kill things with this setup, and it's totally worth getting. To get it, you'll need to craft an obsidian bow and throw it into a legacy chest. So, not really that hard to get, either. And there you have it, the top 5 bows in Outward Definitive Edition. These are all really strong options that each do something unique. I would recommend making as many of them as you can and just doing one full bow playthrough. You could switch bows depending on the boss and you always have the upper hand. Bows offer a very fun and unique gameplay style that lets you stay safe, focus on survival aspects, and still deal high levels of damage. It really shines in outward as close to range combat takes a bit more skill to master, and you completely avoid learning enemy movesets because all you hear is plink, plink, plink. Try out a bow and use one of these five if you do. I guarantee you'll have a blast. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.